Today we're going to look at some shell voicings. So this was inspired by a Skype lesson I had today with my friend Derek, and he wanted to learn how to play Dreams by Fleetwood Mac. He was specifically interested in the lead parts, the electric guitar, and there's a line that comes in in about 49 seconds when Stevie Nicks says, like a heartbeat drives you mad, and the guitar does this. <laughs> And it was in playing that and hearing this chord, I was like, hang on. <gasps> That's a Zephyr song. So these chord shapes are found in Dreams, Zephyr song, and a load of other songs. So I wanted to break them down and show you what they are, how you can use them. We're talking shell voicings. So a shell voicing is a seventh chord, but distilled. It's a distilled seventh chord into the key intervals, the key elements of that chord, namely the third and the seventh. Now with these particular examples, we also have the root note in there. But what the third and the seventh do is they give us the information, the intervals we need to establish what kind of seventh chord it is. If we look at the first grip, this is actually representing an F major seven. We have F, the root note, a is the major third, that's a good shape to remember. The diagonals are a major third. And then we have the note E. Remember from our major seventh chord study in the cage system, if you saw that video? The major seventh always sits that half step below the root note. So we've got root three seven. That is a shell voicing of the F major seven. Dreams then uses chords from the key of C major. And so F, if we think in terms of C major, that's the four chord. A four chord will be a major seventh. But as it moves on up to the five chord, the note G, that would be a dominant seventh. And you see how the shape will change. We get that. Now, the difference between a major and dominant seventh is in the seventh. It's a flat seven. And we see that. there is a flat seven. We have root three, flat seven. This here is a shell voicing of a G seven, a G dominant seventh. F major seven, G seven. This third chord, if we consider A as our root note, we then have what is a A minor seven, a shell voicing for a minor seventh chord. That would contain a minor third, which we see there, with that frets gap, that's a minor third root, flat three. And then this note up here is, is a flat seven, a whole step below the octave of the root. A minor seven. And it was that chord that, uh, Zephyr song. We'll get to that in just a moment. So one more time, it's major seven, dominant seven, minor seven. Now just what do we do with those? Well, what you can do is continue up this string set to find the other shell voicings in this key. If you're not exactly sure, you can map out the notes of C major, and then what you do is just climb up one note on each string, and it would give us this. So that would be the next voicing, which is representing the, uh, the seventh chord, which is a sorry, the chord off the seventh scale degree, which would be, if we think a seventh chord, would actually be a minor seven flat five, but this doesn't have a fifth in it, so the shape stays the same. But then as we go up to the next note, we on the C, we could call the one, and that's gonna be a major seventh. that F one octave above. So there's the shell voicings on that string set, what I call string set two. Now the Zephyr song seems to find us on the string set above, strings five, four, and three. So how do I get this, but on the string set above? Well, when you have a chord shape, what you can do is just move it straight on up and up five frets. But there is just one thing to look out for. If you're moving any notes, going towards the ceiling from string two up onto string number three, you have to lower it one fret because of the tuning difference between strings two and three. So from this shape, 
have it up one string, lower the note falling onto string number three, and then to get the same pitch as the original chord, we go up five frets, one, two, three, four, five. Then we have our Zephyr song. So it's still the same chord, it's an A minor seven, root, flat three, flat seven. Second chord was the G7. Look how the shape has changed, but what's going on? Go down a note on the C major scale, and we get this. If we analyze that, we have a root, there's that major third, root three, flat seven. Now I think the song goes to an E minor triad to an F major triad. We're interested in the shell voicings for today, but if I wanted to continue down and get my other shell voicing for the major seventh, it's going to look like that. That's my shell voicing upon the F note. I could continue down towards the C into the third fret. That would be my E minor seventh, D minor seventh. In a similar way to be learning these shapes, you can walk up this kind of chord scale, going up one note. And then we get each of the, the different shell voicings in this key of C major. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. String set number four that I call six, five, and four, they're tuned in the same distances to the string set three, strings five, four, and three. So those shapes we just saw there can be immediately moved onto that string set. So just to conclude for today then, how do we put those shell voicings up onto string set one, strings one, two, and three? So resetting to the A minor seven grip on string set two, what I can do is take that down onto strings one, two, three, but as I do so, what I need to do is raise the note falling onto string two because of the tuning difference. So the note on string two from string three, when you move from string three onto string two, you have to raise the note up for the intervals to stay the same. And we're gonna have to lower this five frets because as we move down towards the floor, for the same voicing, you have to go lower five frets. One, two, three, four, five. There is the shell voicing of that A minor seven. Root, flat three, flat seven. That, 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 that. So then how do I get the other shapes? Again, I could just move up the note of the musical alphabet. That then there is the C major seven with the shell voicing. Root three, seven. Up into the two. Would be a minor seven. Three would be minor seven. Four would be major seven. So that's root three, seven. And then the five would be the dominant seventh. So we flatten that seventh. Root three, flat seven. Back to the A minor 7, B. So there you are, just a little insight into some shell voicings coming out of Dreams by Fleetwood Mac, as also seen and heard in the Zephyr song by the Chili Peppers. Tabs for the lesson will be available to members of my Patreon group, where you can help support my work for as little as $3 per month. You can find out more about that with the link down below. Also down below, there is a link to my shop where you can get yourself a free copy of Fretboard Mastery, my ebook to memorizing the notes of the fretboard in just a few days. Thank you very much, you practice well, and I'll see you again soon.